Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Justyna Orłowska and in this presentation I will describe two experiments released during the first international camp of experimental archaeology Toruń 2021. During two weeks, participants of the event, divided into two groups, undertook two complex archaeological experiments with the purpose of creating and testing replicas of two archaic boats a dugout and a letter-covered boat known more from ethnographic context as the so-called skin-on-frame canoe. Uh, all work was carried out exclusively using techniques and tools known in the Stone and Bronze Age. From a scientific perspective, the main goal of both experiments was to supplement our experimental tool reference collection with various macrolytic heavy-duty tools and with specimens used for activities requiring large-scale supportive processes, such as burning in the case of wood and soaking in lye. At first I will describe experimental making of a dugout boat. Uh, as raw material for our boat, uh, we have prepared trunk from the European ash. It was about 6 meters long and 80 centimeters in diameter. This trunk was exposed to weathering for two years. For the needs of the project, we prepared also 27 different tools, which were replicas of known prehistoric artifacts. The set mostly included various types of adzes, axes, wedges, and mullets. The first stage of the work was connected with removing the bark and pre-shape the boat. For this purpose, wooden wedges and antler adzes hit with wooden mallets were used. The work was effective and the peeled bark came down in long patches. Once the bark ended, it was time to prepare the top of the trunk for the firing process. To do this, first we flattened it and then we chiseled a groove along the entire length of the trunk. At the second stage, burning was started as processing method. It consisted in placing glowing charcoals inside the groove made before and later after a few firings inside the shaped boat. Wood burning was maintained with an air blow and the charred fragments were removed with replicas of various prehistoric tools. The sides of the boat were protected with a layer of wet clay and sand, which prevented them from burning. This helped also with forming the shape and thickness of the dugout. To spread the fire along the length of the trunk, pine and beech wood chopped into small pieces were used. The burning process lasted about one hour and a half. Subsequently, the coal and the fuel remains were removed. When the fired surface cooled down slightly, we proceeded to remove the charred layer of wood inside the boat with a flint truncheon and the antler adzes. The process of cleaning out the part of the trunk being proceed took about 20 minutes. Uh, our work schedule for the next couple of days was similar to the one described above. Every day we were able to carry out three to four such cycles, which resulted in the removal of approximately six to eight centimeters of wood layer. As time went on, we started to work with metal axes and adzes, replicas of tools from the Bronze Age and the early Iron Age. They turned out to be very effective as they made deeper cuts inside the proceed wood, this triggering uh, an increasing depth of fire penetration during the burning process. When the burning out of the inner part of the dugout was close to an end, we decided to start the process of shaping the beak and stern of the boat. We lit two small fires at both ends of the trunk. Uh, the fire took about one hour, followed by the removal of the burnt material. Uh, at the same time, we have treated some bottom and side elements of the boat to give it a more streamlined shape and to level the boat's curvature.
In conclusion, uh, the entire work lasted 11 days, with at least four people working seven to eight hours each day. Uh, the finished dugout is 415 centimeters long, with an average wide of 50 centimeters. It was necessary to use approximately eight square meters of wood as firing fuel for its completion. And the most important information that was obtained by this experiment is the one relating to the key importance of the hardness of wood used to make the dugout. It was also crucial to properly protect the dugout walls with clay. And working with many different types of tools allowed us to initially classify them in terms of effectiveness and assess their advantages and disadvantages. So it's time to move on to the description of the second experiment. Mm, to build the skeleton of a boat, plant materials in the shape of willow branches were collected from the nearest forest. To cover the boat, we used red deer skins sewn together with strings made of pig intestines. In addition, various tough flint and bone tools were, were prepared to process the needed materials. Uh, the construction of the boat began with a frame, on which later sheeting was supposed to be stretched later. In the first stage of the work, preparing the necessary wooden raw material, uh, mostly straight willow branches, was the most important. To cut them off, re replicas of Neolithic and Bronze Age axes were used. Um, after obtaining the materials necessary to build the boat skeleton, we sketch its shape on the ground. The work started with drilling holes at a proper distance where branches were placed. The boat sides were woven to a height of about 28 centimeters along its entire circumference with willow twigs. In the next step, all branches were tied and connected to the woven parts of the boat sides. Eight branches were cut on each side of the keel to form four long longitudinal boat frames of the skeleton. Both the bow and the stern of the boat were secured with poplar bust and their structure was strengthened by tying a series of willow twigs so that the plating would not be broken in the future when reaching the shore. The skeleton constructed this way was turned inner side up. After that, the braided lines of the sides were completed, straightened and finished by tying them with a poplar bust. And the inside bottom of the boat's frame was covered with two mats made of willow twigs. To cover the skeleton of the boat, eight deer hides were required. Due to our limited time uh, for our camp, we have decided to prepare six of them in advance. The remaining two were proceed during the camp. Two frames were constructed from previously cut uh, willow branches on which fresh deer hides were stretched. These hides had to be cleaned of the remains of fat and flesh and we used for this both flint and bone tools. After the hides had been cleaned of the remains of fat and flesh, they were put into lye, a mixture of water and ash, for three days. Then the hides were rinsed and stretched on a debarked poplar trunk, where hair was removed. Przygotowujemy skóry, który będzie pokryty na skórach. Jak mówiłem, są to skóry jelenie. Ta skóra była moczona w łubu, czyli w takiej mieszaninie wody z popiołem przez kilka dni. Dzięki temu moczeniu możemy w bardzo łatwy sposób usunąć sierść, czyli tę skórę do takiego poziomu, jak chcemy. 
No i tutaj do tego procesu suwania tych głosów używamy tego rodzaju narzędzi, takich narzędzi zrobionych z kości zwierzęcych, z wklejonymi wkładkami krzemiennymi, które są tutaj jak gdyby no, tym ostrzem, które te włosy nam usuwa. The aim of the next stage was to sew together previously prepared hides. They were tried on to the skeleton in pairs and sewn together. Holes in the hides were made along their edges with the bone os and point-like tools. E, naszego skórzaka, e, jak widać, no, są to wyprawione skóry, jak już mówię, jelenie. Te skóry muszą być w jakiś sposób łączone. My do łączenia e, skór używamy e, jelit e, 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 zwierzęcych. E, e, oczywiście no, te jelita są dość miękkie, także więc no, zanim je przełożymy przez tą skórę, należy wykonać otwory. My takie otwory wykorzystujemy, wykonujemy w pomocy takich kościanych przekuwaczy, jak widać. Tutaj takie przekuwacze były wykorzystywane na naszych terenach e, no, około 7-8 tysięcy lat temu. Eight heights sewn together resulted in a seam with a total uh, length of 11 and a half meter. Its creation was exhausting and required the work of a few people. Uh, sheeting prepared uh, this way was stretched on the boat skeleton and connected to it with a natural string. Then it was left to dry. After 11 days of work, the boat was finished. Mm, due to the limited duration of the camp, impregnation of the boat was impossible at the place. Uh, we only managed to prepare birch tar with two vessel method, uh, which will be used to seal the boat's seams in the near future. So, uh, to sum up. Uh, due to the complexity of the whole experiment, uh, it was necessary to divide the work. So, the steps described above were sometimes performed at the same time. Uh, the whole structure is uh, really huge, but is relatively light and three people can easily carry it. Um, we are not sure how many people will be able to use the boat. However, we think that at least four people will be able to do it. And as one of the more interesting observations, we can point out a difference that was observed in the durability of the working edges between bone tools made of old and fresh raw material. So, uh, the main scientific goal of the boat experiments uh, was to supplement the comparative base of experimental tools kept at our institute, and this goal has been achieved. The described experiments were our first attempts at reconstructing uh, boats. Uh, during the project, we learned a lot both about the tools required and the process of production, which is very specific. We have also learned a lot about the organization of such complicated experiments, knowledge that will be used during the second international camp of experimental archaeology that we plan for the near future. And of course, there would be no camp without the people participating in it. So Alicia, Claudio, Dominic, Dorota, Hildi, Jelier, Marain, Mateo, Tabe, Asane, thank you for your commitment, your hard work and smile. We will never forget you. Uh, we also want to express our great appreciation to our sponsors and all the great people who helped us. Um, all interested in our camp are invited to visit the event's website and to read the article, uh, which is the entirely devoted to it. So this is it. Thank you very much for your attention.